Hello and welcome to this video of the highlights from the October board meeting. As you know, these, these videos are produced every month to give staff and members of the public an update about what's going on in our board meetings and to have some insights into the topics we've discussed at the previous month's board. This month we started our board meeting, as always, with a patient story. And this, this story was actually a very difficult story to hear and involved a visitor to the, to the hospital who needed urgent care uh, in, actually in the grounds of the hospital. And that meant a number of people from teams who wouldn't normally be involved in some of the clinical care for patients having to come to, come to the rescue of, of this patient and required a real team effort from both clinical and non-clinical staff to make sure that this patient and his family were cared for in the most appropriate way. The board were really reassured to hear from a couple of members of the portering team who were present at the board meeting how well they'd worked in co collaboration with the clinical teams and also really reassuring to see how well the eye care philosophy that underpins everything we do here at the hospital absolutely came to the fore and everyone rallied forth to make sure that the situation was dealt with appropriately. It was a really, really encouraging story to hear, despite the sad circumstances. Every month I give the board a chief executive's report on some of the key developments that are affecting the trust at the moment. And this month I was able to update the board on uh, an appointment that we've recently made for an associate medical director for primary care. We are working much more closely now with our colleagues in uh, GPs and practice nurses and, uh, and colleagues in primary care. So we felt it's really important that we have somebody at a senior medical level within the organisation who can bring the primary care perspective to our conversations within the hospital. Dr John Howes, our medical director, was therefore very keen that we appointed this associate medical director and I'm pleased to say we've appointed Dr Burge Ballion, who is a GP at Crewkern, to be the associate medical director for primary care and we're looking forward to working him very, with him very closely to get both a perspective on what we're doing in the hospital from a GP's point of view but also to facilitate communication back out to GPs in the community so they can be kept up to date with the key developments that are happening within the hospital. I was also able to talk to the boy in my report about some work that's going on across Somerset uh, under the banner of the Case for Change. This is a piece of work that's being led by our colleagues in the Somerset Clinical Commissioning Group, working collaboratively with ourselves, Musgrove Park Hospital, Somerset County Council and Somerset Partnership Trust to look at how we need to work collaboratively going forward to deal with the ever-increasing challenges facing the NHS, particularly the financial challenges that are facing the whole NHS, and the ever-increasing population growth, particularly with older people, which are going to place a significant challenge to the whole NHS and social care system in the future of how we work much more closely together. Locally, within some South Somerset, we've already made good progress on this, and many of you will be involved in and know about the Symphony Project, which is a piece of work that we're working on very closely with GPs, community services and social care to look at how we can redesign the system locally here around Yeovil and South Somerset to improve the way we care for older people and those with complex needs. The case for change work across the county is going to build very much on this and look at other things that we could do with our partners across Somerset to really transform the way we deliver care to, these, to patients in the future. In our performance report at the board this month, we looked at some key areas which, which, were, which were measured on both locally and nationally by our commissioners and our regulators. First of which was we reviewed our performance against the waiting time standards. Many of you will know that we have a target nationally to, to make sure that patients are treated within 18 weeks from the point at which they're referred by their GP for treatment to the point at which they're actually treated here in the hospital. And I'm pleased to say that here locally in Yeovil, we've made some really good progress and are achieving significantly better waiting times with, on average, patients waiting only 15 weeks for treatment from being referred by their GP in all specialties, except for orthopaedics, where patients are being treated within 17 weeks. This is a fantastic achievement and really positive news for us here at Yeovil and our, for our local community because it means that patients are getting seen more quickly, they're being able to access services more quickly and that ensures that, they're, that, they're, that when they're in pain or needing services they're able to get that as quickly as they need to. So it's a really good achievement and the board were really, really positive about that and we're also very uh, wanted to make sure that we rec recognise that within, with staff and thank staff for all the hard work they've put in to make sure we've, we've achieved that level of performance. We also talked about our uh, performance against key infection control measures and again you'll know that we, we have a very strong focus on infection control across the hospital. 
we looked at two key measures, the MRSA, um, uh, numbers of MRSA infections, and I'm pleased to say that we've only had one MRSA hospital-acquired infection in the past 12 months, months, which is really, really a fantastic performance. And we also discussed our, our, our target to reduce uh, C. diff infections in the hospital. This current financial year we're in, we have a target to have no more than nine hospital-acquired C. diff infections. And currently we're, we have uh, had seven infections within the hospital. We're actually having some conversations with our commissioners because we believe that about three or four of those infections haven't actually been acquired in hospital. And we're hopeful that we'll be able to uh, discuss that with, with, with our commissioners. However, we do have a real focus on making sure that our performance in C. diff continues to improve. And I'd encourage everybody to make sure that they know the latest guidelines, particularly around antibiotic prescribing, which have a massive impact on, on our ability to manage C. diff infections. If you have any queries on this, please get in contact with our infection control team. We'd be happy to, happy to help you to give you some advice. We also talked about our A&E performance. Uh, we have the, obviously the standard national standard to make sure that patients admitted to A&E are seen within four hours. Uh, 95% well, of those patients are seen within four hours. We're doing really well at the moment. Uh, around about 96-97% of our patients are routinely seen within four hours in our A&E department, which is great performance. And also our ambulance handover times, the time it takes for us to hand over the patient from the ambulance crew to the nursing staff in A&E. Uh, again, we're doing really, really well on this, and that I know there's a lot of hard work gone on in A&E to make sure that we continue to uh, deliver this consistently, and we really are delivering this consistently. Currently, we are one of the best performing trusts in the South West, uh, with an average handover time of around about 12 minutes, which is great considering the challenging times that we have in sometimes of increasing activity with ambulances, and just to give you some indication of that, current, on average, we have around about 40 ambulances attending the A&E department every day, and around about 130 attendances overall through our A&E de department. So achieving this level of performance is no mean feat, and the board are really uh, recognising the, the hard work that goes in, not just in A&E, but across the hospital, to make sure that the flow of patients is maintained, and that patients are seen and treated appropriately and quickly as they need to be. Obviously, being the October board, we're, we're getting ready as an organisation for winter. And uh, Johnson Hickman, our Director of Urgent Care and Long-Term Conditions, presented to the board the, the winter plan that we've got in place within the hospital to make sure that we're able to cope with the expected increasing activity that we, we traditionally see through the winter months. This year, uh, Yvonne Thorne is working very closely on this in her new role as Head of Operations in the hospital. And uh, we were able to talk through some of the measures we put in place internally to make sure we're going to be able to manage demand as it increases throughout the winter. Uh, we, we've got a real focus this year on making sure that our discharge processes are, are as, as good as they can be and a real drive to try and make sure that patients are discharged as early in the day as they can be because the, from the analysis we've done we know that we traditionally always have enough beds to cope with the patients who are here by, by, by later on in the evening but it's often the most pressurised point of the day is later in the afternoon and then into the early evening where we haven't perhaps seen the discharges yet in the, in, in happening but patients are arriving and needing to be admitted through the emergency department. So there's a real drive to try and make sure we bring forward discharge times earlier in the day to make sure we can get people out as quickly as possible and that enables the beds to be freed up for patients who are arriving later in the day to be admitted. So that's very much a key part of our winter plan this year internally. But the winter plan obviously isn't just reliant on us doing things and improving processes in the hospital. It needs us to work very closely with colleagues in community services, GPs, social care. And we are part of, our winter plan forms part of the Somerset winter plan, which Jonathan and Yvonne are working very closely with colleagues on to make sure that we have the right systems and processes across the hospital and across the community to deal with increased activity over winter. The board were very pleased to hear about the hard work going on, but recognise that this is going to be a big challenge for us to make sure that we can manage our patient flows effectively and that we care for patients appropriately all through the winter time. Mark Power, our HR director, gave an update to the board about uh, progress in some key measures in his area, uh, particularly our focus on making sure we increase our rates of appraisal. You'll know that everybody in the organisation should be having an annual appraisal with their line manager to make sure that we're clear about what their objectives are for the coming year and what their development needs are. We know we've still got further work to do to increase our appraisal rates and I'd encourage any of you who are managers listening to this video to check that you are doing, uh, 
timely and good quality appraisals with your staff is a really key part of our, of our management responsibility within the organisation. To assist managers in trying to make the process as, as streamlined as it can be, we're also trialling an electronic appraisal system so that it will, it will mean that managers can uh, conduct their appraisal online with a simple tool to make sure that the, the process is as efficient as it can be so that it isn't too bureaucratic a burden for patient, for staff members and managers to, to go through the appraisal process on annual, or annually. We're making good progress on a mandatory training, which has been an area of concern in the past, and the board were really pleased to see some of the progress that's been made there to the getting people through their mandatory training, which again is a key part of, of the responsibility of both the employee and the manager in the organisation. And we also discussed the recent staff survey that's been sent out to staff. This year, every member of staff in our organisation is going to receive a copy of the National Staff Survey, and I'd really encourage staff members to complete it. Really, for us, it's important to understand how it feels to be a member of staff here, and we can only do that if we get good and accurate feedback from our staff members. So please ensure that you complete your staff survey uh, when you receive it. We also talked through with Mark and the board about what would it take to make our organisation an even better place to work, and we came up with a number of innovative ideas and, su and suggestions from the board that Mark is going to go and take back to, to build into a development plan. And this could be a range of things from both how we reward and recognise staff in the organisation, right through to basic things about employment, how we uh, provide services and support staff. So a really interesting opportunity, I think, for us to think quite differently and learn from other industries of where people have done this really well and made their organisations a great place to work. So you can expect to see further work on this going forward in the next 12 months. Helen Ryan also gave an update to the board as Director of Nursing about our ongoing work following the Francis recommendations that came out earlier this year. Um, number of things that Helen's been working on, first of all looking at safe staffing levels on our wards. Uh, there's some new guidance due out in November from the National Quality Board around safe staffing ratios between registered nurses to patients. And once that's come out we will be doing a gap analysis across the hospital looking at the ratio of ner qualified nurses to patients in all of our wards and Helen will be bringing a, a proposal and recommendations to our board in January on any areas where we believe we need to adjust our staffing ratios. So it's a really important piece of work to make sure that our nursing staffing is, is at the right levels to make sure we can deliver the best quality care to our patients. Helen also gave an update to the board on the work that's going on to improve patient experience across the hospital. And this includes looking at our both complaints and how we manage our complaints process but bringing that together much more with our PALS, bereavement services and some of the work that's going on in the hospital looking at our front, uh, front of house uh, contact with patients so that we're looking at the whole patient experience from the point at which they contact the hospital whether that's through their GP referral or a phone call right through to when they're admitted and being an inpatient on the ward and Helen and, and colleagues across the hospital are looking at how we could try and bring some of that work together so it's a really focused on improving patient experience at every contact that a patient may have with us across the trust. The board also received a really interesting presentation from Dr Steve Gore, our Research and Development Director, and Barbara Williams-Yesson, the R&D Manager here at Yeovil Hospital, which was really interesting to hear about some of the current research projects that are underway within the trust. We perform really, really well. Despite being a small organisation, we have a very vibrant and innovative R&D department. And their work is currently, they're working on currently a number of uh, research projects, both nationally and internationally. And the Trust has been very well recognised uh, as a leading light of, of small hospitals within the R&D field. So it was really great to get Barbara and Steve to come along and give an update on that to the board and hear about some of the really innovative work that's going on here in Yeovil that's about improving care for patients, not just here in the hospital, but across the country. So it, the board were really uh, grateful for both of them for coming along and really pleased to hear about some of the great work that they're leading within the hospital. Those are the key summary points from the October board meeting, uh, but a, a number of board members were also present this week at the uh, Eye Care Awards ceremony, which was set up to recognise a, a range of good practice and excellence from across the hospital. And it was great to see so many people being nominated and recognised at the awards ceremony earlier, earlier this week. 
Uh, so often it's difficult to take the time to stop and reflect on just what, what good work is going on across the hospital and the board were really pleased to see just how many people were able to, to come along and, and join in the celebrations which were really, uh, really excellent to, to see what such good work was going on. We're already giving thought to how we could improve the process for next year and hopefully we'll be able to recognise even more colleagues from across the hospital in next year's eye care award ceremony. Just finally, if, as always, if you've got any reflections or any questions or points you'd like to raise as a consequence of what you've heard from this board summary video, then you'll find the email address at the end of this video. You'll be able to drop a line to our communications team and feedback, or you can contact me personally through the trust email address. And look forward to updating you on our November board meeting next month. Thanks very much.